And then when I want to unfreeze, just click that again. And we have now unfrozen the image. You can also use your control panel on the document camera itself. Let me focus this by pressing the I for autofocus, and that will refocus there. I'm going to press my freeze again, just to bring this up, and let's see if this is going to work for us. Okay. Just so you see the control panel itself, I can still press any one of the buttons on here. As an example, I'm going to hit my autofocus, and it'll still work. So if you're comfortable pressing the buttons on the control panel itself, you can do that to zoom in, zoom out, autofocus, but you cannot do the playback or the capture, delete, or the record feature. Okay, Just the zoom in, zoom out, autofocus, and freeze. So right now, once again, I'm going to hit the freeze button within the software and get us back to what's under the document camera right here. So if some of you can guess what that is. It is a honeycomb from a beehive. I'll just zoom in a little bit here again to show you the power of the document camera. Get a little bit closer. There we go. Now if the window appears to be small, you can always come back up here to your upper right, click on the enlarge window, and bring it up to the full size. Okay. So I want to zoom back out to 100%. It's a zoom reset button. Just click on that, and it will go right back to 100%. So you see how far that I actually zoomed in. Okay. And if you want to minimize or reduce this window once again, right back up to the top right, you see the little curved arrow. Click on that. And we're back down to this side window. Okay, so now for what you're waiting for, how to record. Video camera, AverVision record. Simply click on that, and it will bring up your recording. Once I bring this up, I have several different options for recording resolution. 644, 80, 800, 600, 1024 by 768. Uh, default is going to be at the 800 by 600. If you plan on emailing or anything like that, I'd go with the smaller size. However, just to let you know, this is what we call an uncompressed video file, so it will be rather large. You want to try to keep these videos down to about five minutes uh, length. Three to five minutes would be good, especially if you have limited hard drive space. Now, it's not to say that you cannot drop it into a third-party software and go ahead and compress the, the video file to make it smaller. But in this case, we're just going to do a straight recording. Now, a couple of the things that are very, very important, and it is the Save In tab with the folder. You want to be able to save this someplace, and you want to be able to find it. So it says Select Directory. If I were to click on that, going to open up my directory to where I want to save my video. You notice it doesn't give you an option to create a new folder, so what you're going to want to do first is I suggest making a folder on your desktop itself. So I have already done that, and I just made it webinar video. So I click on that folder and click OK. So what that means is anytime that I make a recording, it will be saved into that folder. The other thing, too, is we want to make sure that we give the file a name. And we do so right down here. And I'm just going to put test2. Once we've done that, we have one other option if we like. Notice right in this area here, it says add shortcut to new page. If I did not check that box, what would happen is once I made my recording, it would lay that recording on top of this page. So it might look a little bit cluttered and confusing. So I always like to click on this and it will automatically add it to new page. Uh, let's see here. Hopefully you folks aren't having any difficulties. I see something that just popped up here. Okay. 
minimize this again. Everybody's doing okay, right? Okay. I'll minimize this. And as I mentioned, we're going to do the recording. I apologize if people are typing right now and if I can't get to your questions, get those answered. Because uh, I need to do this part and give the, the quick training, but I promise you at the end that I'll be able to try to answer as much as we can and I believe Michael is on as well. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and press the record button. So now it is recording. So whatever is happening underneath the document camera, if I'm zooming in or if I'm going to point out something on my document or what's under my document camera, as an example, use my pointer to talk about the honeycomb shape, we'll be capturing all of that. And it'll also capture the audio as long as you have a microphone built into your computer or a microphone connected to your computer. Once I'm finished recording, come back and click on the record button, which is now stop button. And as I mentioned, because I just clicked or checked, it added the recorded video to a new page on my document. And here it is. I'm going to click out of this once again just to clear out the palette. And I'll have the play button. Click on that. Okay, so we get the idea of what's happening there. Now you can always you can reduce the size of this video if you want. The video image or the screen. And as I mentioned that I had it saved to my folder called webinar video. Just to show you that, I'm gonna minimize this window. Part of what you want to do and the reason that you want to make sure that you make these folders so your desktop relatively clean or clutter free, uh, kind of like the way I have mine right now. So I know exactly where everything is at. So I have my webinar video folder. I'll double click on that. Here's that video. It tells me that it was 35 seconds in length and it was almost 3 megabytes in uh, size for the file. So if I double click on this, it should open up in my Windows Media Player. And there it is. So now it's finished recording. So whatever is happening underneath the document camera, I'm okay. in. So now it's very, very easy for any of you to go back in here. And if you want, you could click on the video, do a right click, and rename that video. And as it says here, you have to make sure that you have the file extension, which is an AVI. So if you look here, at the very end it says .avi. If I did not put that on my file name, the video would not play. So I have to make sure that I put .avi, test.avi. Oops. It's being used because I have it open up still in my uh, software. But that's what you would end up doing. 